And a wise man once said that all things come from God to men through men. Relationships are an intrinsically woven concept into the reality of mankind from time immemorial and even to today. And that is the reason why we are gathered here today, so that we can understand and dissect the concept and the wisdoms and the principles of relationships, which is an all-important principle even with regards to young people today. Welcome to Fort on Air, courtesy of the Ford Ministry, Life Church International Limuru. This is the inaugural screening of Fort on Air. Fort on Air is the mentorship platform of the Ford Ministry of Life Church International Limuru. And today we are excited to commence this journey with you, our viewer, even as we continue to grow and continue to learn on this platform. Today, I am joined by the fourth ministry pastor at Life Church International Limuru, Pastor Peter Kanjagwa. Karibu sana. Kwasi. Thank v you very much. Very good to have you here. Amazing. Umetufungulia kitu. Ah, kabisa. Lazima. Lafurai sana. And very so, excited. karibu, karibu. Awesome. And so, pull back your seat, get yourself something nice and warm or cold to drink, whatever you prefer, non-alcoholic, so that we can be able to dissect this matter and get to learn some more. So, Pasi, relationships is perhaps one of the most talked about topics, especially amongst young people today, believers and non-believers alike. And so even as we commence with this conversation, the first thing I'd like you to help us understand is what is the concept of relationships and why is it so critical to mankind? Why is it a concept that we cannot do without as human beings? Um, one is to say thank you very much for having me. I'm really excited to be here because these are conversations that are very important uh, to us as a generation because we are living in a, in a time that is very critical uh, where people are disintegrating every other time. So relationship is a very key uh, aspect of humankind because mankind is created uh, one to express the image of God. The Bible says in Genesis that let us make man in our own image and in our own likeness. Uh, so what that means is that we are, we are a projection of who God is. And God is relational. That is why he says that I am love. Because love can only be expressed from one person to the other. So that means that uh, man is generally relational. Uh, scripture says in Ecclesiastes, uh, two are better than one. Because when one falls, the other one will lift him up. That how can one keep warm alone? Because uh, the idea around people having relations is that they you become better. Uh, the multiplication of scripture is that when one can chase a thousand, two don't do addition. It is multiplication. Anytime you are having a relation with someone uh, from all angles, it is a multiplication effect. It is not an addition effect when it comes to scripture. So that is the basis on which we stand, that relationships are the base for any kind of person. For you to be able to move from one level to another, for you to be able to achieve what God has called you to be. For example, I am a pastor. I cannot preach to myself. I have to have relations. I have to have people that I am preaching to. Uh, I cannot say that I will not mind of what others are going through. I will not mind of what others are, uh, are, are maybe thinking or all that. I have to be intentional in creating relationships among the people that I have. So it is a base on which people stand on. It is a base that we cannot ignore because that is the aspect of God that now brings us to that place, that God is three in one. So we are also supposed to be in relations. So looking at scripture in Genesis when he says, let us make man, it is because God was speaking within a context of a relationship that there is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They were having a communication. They were having a conversation. Let us make man. So in that place, we also cannot make a decision or cannot uh, start anything without having a relation. And that does not just mean it is, it is uh, uh, romantic relationships only. Uh, because people most of the times just think that because it's young people that you're talking to, we're only talking about re romantic relations. No, we have to have relations from the beginning all the way to where we are. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. <clears throat> There's so much wisdom you've just released from what you've just summed up now. But let's try and dissect it a little bit. And there's something that you mentioned, uh, and I've just remembered John 3.16, for God so loved that he gave. Every time there is a giving, it means there must be a receiving. Very true. And any time there is a giving, the one who is giving cannot be the same one that is receiving. Very true. So right off the bat, we are able to understand that any time there is relationship, it has to do with more than one person. Very true. At least two or more people. But perhaps what has caught my attention even more is the concept of every time there is, there is a relationship, the idea of multiplication comes into play. Yes. And that as a man was alone in Eden, there had not yet come the instruction of multiply. Mm. The multiply came to them, not to him. Multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. And so perhaps uh, from what you've just explained right now, ideally, yes, the concept of relationship has to include more than one person. How does purpose now relate to relationship? Or rather, is it an important principle as well in relationship? It's very important. I think one of the things that we agree is there is a flow that cannot happen whenever there is no relationship that is being built. Uh, when you talk about relationship and purpose, uh, purpose is what God has created you to do in this world at such a time as this. So there's all, all of us, there's something that God has created for us to do and to be in life. And most of it is related to how we deal with people. Because you were created for people, you were not created for, for creatures. And that is why looking at even the creation story, you will easily tell the blessing was not released to Adam when he was alone. Because then he was he didn't have relations with animals. He didn't have relations with anyone else. He only had relations with God who was a spirit. So now this man Adam required for him to have a relation for God to speak a blessing. And that, that is what scripture says, and God blessed them. Because the, the concept of purpose is in the them dimension. That wherever you are, when, when you put people together, it's like a car. If you have an engine without a body, it is useless. If you have one wheel and no three wheels, it is useless. It is a shell. And that is why people, most people think that I can live alone. I can, I can fulfill my purpose alone. If this finger decides today it does not need the whole body, it becomes useless. Mm. If today my hand decides I will detach from this body and I will live on my own, it becomes useless. And that is the concept of, of, of relationship and purpose, that you can be in your place of purpose, you can be in your place of functionality, but you need people who are in their place of functionality for you to also attain the purpose that you have. Mm. So today, if my hand is cut off, Yes, it will still remain as a hand. Mm -hmm. Yes, we will still know its purpose as a hand is to hold, to touch, and to do all that. But because it is detached from the body, mm -hmm. it becomes useless. Mm -hmm. Most of the people that we have in our generation, mm -hmm. they have gotten to a place where they think that detaching is a good thing, mm -hmm. that I can live by myself and still fulfill purpose. Mm -hmm. Truth of the matter is, you will still, we will know you as a, as a big televangelist, we will know you as a pastor. We will know you as any other thing. But unless you are plugged into someone else who is fulfilling another part of the purpose, then you will never become productive because productivity is rooted in relationships. It is not good for man to be alone. Exactly. Uh, and actually, as, as you were speaking, I was just remembering, if you look through scripture, very rarely would an individual achieve something functioning alone. Yes. There would always either be a partner in the form of a spouse or a comrade, for example, so that Elisha cannot be Elisha without Elijah. Yes. Joshua cannot be Joshua without Moses. Yes. Uh, even for Solomon, he cannot attain even to get into the throne without the assistance that comes to him and the blessing of David right. by the time he's taking off. Even Jesus cannot perform mm -hmm. his own ministry without mm -hmm. the 12 disciples. Mm -hmm. So he's just producing what he even desires. John the Baptist exactly. Yeah. exactly. So relations are very important. Yeah. Some of them uh, are one-on-one. -on -one. Some of them are distance. Because looking at uh, the, the 12 disciples, Looking at their relationship with Jesus, there were ranks. There were those that were very close, the beloved, 
we have Peter, James, and John. Then we also have the others who, even when Jesus was ascending to the mountain to go and pray, he left some, went with some, and then left the others. So there's, there's a level of relationship that every one of us has to have, and it goes closer and closer. There are those that are in the outer courts, those that are in the inner courts, and those that are in the Holy of Holies mm -hmm. when it comes to relationships. Okay. We've looked at purpose as a foundation that creates or strengthens a relationship. How about vision as a dynamic? And by this I'm speaking that two cannot work together unless they agree. That unless you're both seeing the same destination, it becomes difficult for you to work together. How does that merge into the dynamic of relationship? Scripture says, write down your vision in capital letters, so that he that runs. So that means that you are writing down your vision, uh, which is your purpose, what God has given you to do. But there is one that runs with it. Uh, the moment you start writing your vision, the moment you start uh, incorporating people in your vision, it means that that vision will be accomplished faster. This, this is what uh, people in English say. If you want to go far, mm. if you want to go fast, go alone. Mm. If you want to go far, go with others. Mm. Because there's a warmth that you get. There's a, a, a strength that you get to even accomplish more when it comes to, uh, to, to purpose, when it comes to vision, that you can only be attained when you are in a relationship, when you are working with others, when you are moving with others. Uh, the moment, the reason why they say work with others is because at most times you lose strength. You, I've, I've had times that I also lose, lose the energy of prayer. There are times I, I don't feel like I want to pray. I don't feel like I want to study the Bible. I don't feel like I want to do anything. But there are times that you come for prayer and you feel, Kabisa, I cannot do this. I don't, I don't have the energy to do this. And someone just holds your hand and you start, you, you come back to life mm -hmm. because this person is feeding you, is feeding the energy for you. So when it comes to vision, you can have an, a wonderful vision, but that vision has to be fed. For example, now, uh, as a church, we might think that some, some areas are not useful. But as a church, we have the ushering department that, has, that is feeding the bigger vision of the church. We have the music department that is feeding the bigger vision of the church. We have the HR that is feeding the bigger vision of the church. So that means that all these relations are what are helping us to achieve the vision that is there. So I cannot come and say that I have everything. I am not a superhuman. I am not the embodiment of power and, and strength and ability. I need to have people that we hold hands together and we decide this is where we are going. This is our vision. This is what we want to attain. We will keep each other in check so that we ultimately attain our vision. Mm. Yes. Now, lastly, on this issue of the concept of relationship, of course, we've now looked at purpose, we've looked at vision as well. But there's something else that sticks out in scripture quite often. Let me paint it this way. When a helper is sought for Adam and the animals are presented to him, the scripture says a suitable helper was not found. Yes. However, now we have the privilege of understanding that the constitution of the animal and the constitution of the man were very different. They weren't similar. Very true. Because they were not similar, there could not be intimacy or relationship very between true. them. It demanded that one was made again in the image and in the likeness of the man. When the man sees her, he says, this is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Right. Showing that now this one we can engage with in relationship yes. because we are made of the same stuff. Right. At the same time, Jesus speaking to Nicodemus in John 3 says you cannot experience the things of the kingdom of God unless you are born of the water and born of the spirit again tells the woman at the well, God is spirit. Yes. And those who worship must do it in spirit. spirit. So what is the place of similarity in constitution, again, when it comes to relationship? How can two walk together unless they agree? That is the first scripture that pops out of my mind. We have to have an agreement for us to walk together. Yeah. We must have an agreement, not just uh, in, if, if we are to go to a particular place, it's like uh, scripture says, uh, how can two be yoked together? How, what is the relationship between light and darkness? Because when yoking, if you look at uh, the, the history of 
uh, Israel, the history of the Jews, is that they used to use cows for plowing. And two cows needed to be yoked together so that they can move in the same direction, so that they can do the plowing. Looking at our lives even now, we need to have a similar mindset. We need to be of the same species. We need to be, uh, the yoke that is made for us should be one that fits both of us so that when we start moving, we move in the right direction. Looking at, uh, uh, at now, for example, the concept of uh, yoking, you cannot yoke one cow looking forward and the other one looking backward. Mm -hmm. You cannot yoke a giraffe and a cow. They have to have a similarity for them to be able to work together. So when it comes to relationships, you have to be of the same species. You have to be of the same mind. You have to be of the same thought. So, so that you, we, we don't get to a place where conflict becomes the most consistent thing. Because if we keep in conflict, we will never move. But if we are in agreement, then moving becomes much easier. Mm -hmm. That we can actually hold hands and say, we are moving towards this direction. And we continue moving. Because we know for sure that our minds are thinking the same. Our hearts are connected. We know what we want to achieve. If Adam decided to call a cow, babe, then it would be chaos. Because Adam was speaking and the cow would be mooing. Mm. So the same thing, mm. even, even in this generation, mm. when we are selecting and when we are looking for relations, people that we, we can work together in terms of uh, starting a business, people that we can work together in terms of ministry, you have to look for your kind so that the moment you moo, he moves. The moment you talk, they talk. Because then you can understand one another then you can have an agreement that this is where we are going. This is what we want to achieve. Vision becomes easier to achieve. Purpose becomes vision, uh, easier to achieve because you are of one mindset. So being in one species, being in one spirit, being of the same mind is very important when it comes to relationships. Okay. Let's look at another one. Authority. Um, and this is a bit controversial especially in the male-female dynamic, because, of course, there's a whole rhetoric of everything a man can do, a woman can do. However, we see that the dynamic of the male-female relationship today, outside of the parameters of Scripture, is within the context of Genesis 3, that after man fell, there was an impact on relationship, that you shall have desire for your husband, but he's going to rule over you. Now, when God says that, it's a consequence of what has happened, which is a negative consequence. We see the correct order of relationship, though, when Christ speaks and says the son can do nothing of his own. He only does what he sees the father do. Notwithstanding the fact that, again, the scriptures say that he's a very image of the invisible God. And so, in fact, we are told the Pharisees sought to bring charges against him in John 5, because he claimed to be the son of God, making himself equal. But we see for he himself, he says, I can't do anything. As if, he's, as if he acknowledged there is an authority that is above me. Is it possible for there to be relationship without one party being in a position of authority? <sighs> yes and no. Mm -hmm. Mostly no. Um, because we have different kinds of relationships. Mm -hmm. One, we have an upward relationship, mm -hmm. uh, a vertical relationship, mm -hmm. and a horizontal relationship. Mm -hmm. One, when it comes to a vertical relationship, mm -hmm. is where basically one is higher than the other, mm -hmm. one gives the instructions, and the other follows. Like, whenever you go to any office, you will realize that there is a hierarchy and there's someone who is giving the instructions and another one who is following the instructions. And we all have to understand where we stand for us to be able to be effective in our place. But when we come to the horizontal, it's, it's a place where we are equals. Mm -hmm. We are able to come up with ideas together. Mm -hmm. We are able to come up with thought plans together. It's like when we talk about the directors, yeah. they have to... All of them are in the same level, per se. They are able to think alike. They are able to, to discuss and come to a conclusion where either they agree or agree to disagree. Mm -hmm. So 
when it comes to the place of authority, we all have to understand what is my place because the, we, we have places where I am, I am uh, a subordinate to somebody and there are places where I am their boss. In the structure, for example, now that we are talking in the church context, uh, in the structure of the church, there are times that a pastor is subject to the, the members and there are times where the members are subject to the pastor because we all have to understand that when it comes to authority, there is duality that we can actually sit down and agree in this matter, you are my head and I have to listen to what you're saying and I have to do what you're saying. But when it comes to this other matter, I am the head and you have to listen unless people now get to the place of understanding and agree that we can actually, I can actually be the boss now and in the next one minute I am the subject and I have to take my position very well without compromising it because then that is the only time that we are able to achieve that which you want to achieve. So authority has to be there either horizontally or vertically. So you will need to understand what is, what is our kind of relationship. Are we a horizontal one? Are we in the same level? Are we people that are peers? Or is there one that is higher than the other? So once we realize that there is one that is higher than the other, we submit. The Bible says submit one to another, which means that there are times that I will submit to you, you will submit to me. So we, that is already a hierarchy in terms of authority. Yes. Now lastly, still on the issue of the principles that govern the concept of relationship, capacity. When I started in the intro, I said, uh, all things come from God to men through men, which means men are always carriers of something one way or another. Uh, does it make relationships more tangible and more fulfilling when those that are in the relationship are cognizant of what they carry and intentionally and willfully pour themselves out as well? One, you have to understand who you are understand what you have and understand what you carry. The moment you understand these three things, you become more effective. Uh, I, I, I don't know who said this, but it, it said that when, ah, it's uh, Miles Monroe who said, when the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. Most of the relations, I might not know your strengths, I might not know your abilities, I might not know what you can do, so abuse of you and your abilities is very high. The chances are that I will really take uh, advantage of the things that you do. But the moment you understand the capacity that you have, the moment you understand the role that you're playing in the relationship, then you become more effective and you become more cognizant of what you're doing that I cannot manipulate you. You see, the way uh, whoever is, whenever you are employed, you're given a job description. Because that is what you're expected to do. And the moment you do what you're expected to do, that means that the capacity that you have that the people are looking for when they were looking for someone to fill that position, you have that capacity. If, for example, today you are a doctor and I come and tell you to do something concerning law, you will easily tell me, by the way, I am not a lawyer, I am a doctor. Because you know yourself. And, and when we come to the, the conversation of uh, relationships, you first have to know who you are, what you can do, and what, you, what your abilities are. So once you understand that, you become more effective in any kind of relationship. Because one, nobody will take advantage of you. That you will be effective. You will be able to become productive in whatever you do. In such a production, there are people that do different things. Uh, you are leading the discussion because that is your strength. I am responding to questions because that is my strength. There's someone who is in the camera because that is their strength. There's someone directing the show because that is their strength. And once you put all these people together, you are able to have a product that is most effective, that will be, that will be more, more effective than all others. So that means that all of us have already identified our capacity and our strengths, and we are focusing on our strengths. If you, are, if you want to attain anything, if you want to do anything effectively, you have to understand the strength of everybody that you have on board so that when, once you give that person a responsibility or a role, then you are sure that that person is able to pour themselves out because that is their area of strength. 
So understanding your capacity, understanding where you're coming from, understanding where you're going, understanding what you carry, very important for relationships. Okay. Uh, I'd like to invite you to just examine two different types of relationships based on these principles that we have discussed. And then we'll get a bit more into the different kinds of relationships that uh, human beings and particularly for us as believers are important to us. And the first is, of course, a male-female relationship in the setup of a household. But the other is also the relationship within the body of Christ. How do these principles apply in the male-female dynamic and then within the relationship of the body of Christ as well? Because we are in a church setting, of course. This whole production is on a church platform as well. So we also need to understand from the perspective of the body of Christ. Because look, we can't escape the reality of the world today. There has been so much negative attention towards churches, so much disunity at times, or just something that is not very positive from that platform. What is it that we are missing as a body of Christ that should bring us together as one? And what is it that's missing from the male-female dynamic in today's world that should make the male and the female to be one as well? This is what scripture says. Behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Then after that, it says it is like oil flowing from Aaron's head to his beard and to his cloak. What you need to understand is that both in the male-female relationships and the body of Christ, it is, um, there's a hierarchy for the flow of the anointing. Mm. The church has lost most of its power because of fighting within itself that they forgot the mandate was to remain united. The, the Lord, our Christ, our bridegroom, is not coming for a disintegrated church. Mm. He's coming for a united church. Mm. So as the church of Christ, we need to understand that the flow of anointing has to have a head that is connected to the body, for the body is clothed with mm. the clock. Mm. So now, looking at this scripture, you realize that oil has to flow from the head. Therefore, we have to have authority. Mm. Whether we like it or not, we have to have authority. Mm. So the head, then it comes to the beard. The beard symbolizes maturity. So there has to be a maturity in the body of Christ and also in the relations that we have, male, female, and all other kind of relations. For us to experience the flow of the anointing, there has to be a maturity that can handle that anointing. Yeah. And that is why scripture is not uh, confused when it says through the beards, even the beards of Aaron. Then after that, to the clock. The clock is what represents priesthood. So it has to come from the head, from the authority, to the maturity. That is where now you understand what is your capacity, what are you able to do, what are you not able to do. And you agree that I'm not able to do this. So you don't push yourself to do something that you're not able to do. And then there's a priesthood. There's, there's a covering. There's, there's what we, we are able to see and identify with. Yeah. So how good and pleasant it is when the brethren dwell together in unity, both in church, the church setup, the body of Christ, mm -hmm. and also in a family setup in terms of uh, male-female relationships. Mm -hmm. Most of the families are not experiencing the flow of the anointing mm -hmm. simply because the head is detached from the body. Mm -hmm. So when the oil wants to be poured, that oil has no place to flow. Mm -hmm. So it has to remain in the flask. Okay. So also in the body of Christ, we have gotten to a place where if we are not careful as a body of Christ, mm. our attention will be shifted mm. from where it is supposed to be. Remember when Peter was walking on water, his attention was shifted from Jesus and he began to swing, mm. to sink. Mm. That is the same place that we are getting ourselves mm. as the body of Christ. Mm. That we are forgetting to look at Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Mm. All of us together. Mm. So there are some that have already shifted their attention to other places and therefore they have started now falling, they have started uh, collapsing, they have started sinking and all this is happening simply because the head has detached from the body. So we need to be very careful and I, that is why I love this conversation because we need to bring back conversations of relations. How do we relate with one another? How do we talk to one another in the body of Christ? Some of us are uh, kucha 
wewe ni kucha na ile kelele umetupigia huko wewe ni wewe ndio unafaa kufinya chawa shetani hapa katikati Ama lakini kujikuna. you ends up <laughs> so you always you cannot come and say that you will do it alone there is no church in Kenya that can that can work alone there is no church in the world that can work alone this is what apostle always says that the 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 harvest of a generation the harvest of a nation cannot be given to one man it cannot be given to one church so the church has to be united that is the first relationship that is very key in the body of christ it, we have to be united for us to be able to carry the anointing that god wants to release mm -hmm. i'm guessing that's the same language of alignment as well definitely yeah Mm. Wow. So with that backdrop now, um, what are some of the relationships that you would consider to be of utmost importance to a young person, to a young person who is a believer as well? Amazing. I've, I've, I've been doing a study for the last few days mm. on the five most important relationships mm. that every young person or every believer or any human being mm. should have. And these five are very, very key that you cannot run away from. Number one is a relationship with yourself. Most of the people, as you've said about capacity, most of us don't have a relationship with ourselves. And we were, it's because you are not taught. You are not taught the importance of you having time to take care of yourself, you having time to go out there and, and just relax. The reason why people are overworking and getting to a place where they want to kill themselves is because these people have not had a time mm. to value themselves enough mm. to actually take themselves out. We are talking to young people. Ask today, do a poll today, mm. how many young people took themselves out for a date on Valentine? We all were expecting, I will be taken out. Someone else will come and take me out. Someone else will buy me chocolate. Someone else will do this and that. And sometimes we lose it because whoever we are waiting to do, does not do. So I have to be cognizant of myself and have a relationship with myself. That the day you tell me I'm not handsome, by there I will not listen to you. Simply because... I have had a relationship with myself and I have taken time to tell myself, by the way, you look good. Mm. You see, the confidence that I have when I know that I am the one who has told myself something is very different from the co confidence that I will have when you are the one that is telling me. Because if I'm dependent on you telling me, then I will have a problem. That is relationship number one. You must have a relationship with yourself. Relationship number two is a relationship with God. We cannot run away from uh, us and God. Because we are before, in this, before, yes. Pasi, before you go to the issue of the relationship with God, I'm, I'm thinking there's a very thin line between having a relationship with yourself and selfishness or pride. Yes. Where do we draw the line? It's a very thin line. It's the same way that we have a very thin line between faith and foolishness. Looking at so me, <laughs> <laughs> there is a very thin line between faith and foolishness. Uh, there are people who are in foolishness, but they say they're in faith. And there are people who are in faith, but they think they're in foolishness. But anyway, that's a topic for another day. When it comes to self-love, you cannot pour out of an empty cup. That's the truth of the matter. You cannot give what you don't have. Scripture is very clear. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. There has to be something that you're pouring out from. Mm -hmm. So there are people who uh, have twisted that and they give themselves everything. So you have nothing to give out. In uh, mkonobirika. Mkonobirika is selfishness. That it is all about you and you alone. What, what uh, selfishness does is that it kills your ability to relate with others. Because everything has to revolve around you. But now what your relationship with yourself does is that it strengthens you as an individual to be able to give out the best version of yourself to others. I have, I have been married for quite a while. And there are times that my wife is very tired because of the works that she does. And sometimes because of the tiredness, she's not able to give herself fully to all of us in the house that are depending on her. So she will get tired 
she will be dread she will want to do a lot for us but she is not able to because either anaumwa ama amechoka and all that but give it like this that she, if she took time to take care of herself to have the rest that she needs to have the time that she needs out to have time to just relax then what that will do is that all the relations that are around her become more effective the moment you as an individual are strong enough the moment you are rested enough everyone around you will feel the warmth the strength the abilities that you have but if you don't have time to take care of yourself then you don't have enough to pour out to people and that is where we get now to burn out even in friendships because you are burning out because you have given more than you have you have given to people more than you have given to yourself you are expecting for someone else to feed you but you have not fed yourself so that is where the the, the clear cut is that you are not just thinking about yourself what you are doing is self care for you to be able to be productive in other relations so what brings or what makes it different is that yes you're taking in but so that you can be able to produce exactly. again exactly. but when it is just taking in for the sake of keeping it in you become a dead sea you become yeah you become a salty lake mm. you see a salty mm. lake is because you receive a lot but there's no, but there's outlet. no outlet so for you yeah. if you are if you are receiving so that you you have an outlet you are able to give out then you are a fresh water lake which is able to give out even fish You know it's it's so important that you mentioned that I was telling someone the other day that I'm becoming very conscious about people who want to harvest in a garden they never planted because you realize again still on that dynamic as well there are people who all they feel is I should have access to you when I want I should receive from you when I want but when it comes to me planting in your life I don't want to do that as well and it becomes toxic and I mean especially if you think about it like when it comes to the family level or even at the not the nuclear family but the extended family where people feel they can be MIA for a year two years three years but when they come they yeah, expect they're that the center of yeah. attention but at the same time we're in a generation where everyone is it's about me myself and I uh, there, there's a there's a quote I read somewhere online and someone has said do what's good for the soul a conversation for another day <laughs> relationship very with true. god <laughs> very true yeah. and and you know nowadays you're saying yolo you only live once mm-hmm. so jipera yeah. hamonyewe and, and it, that's a whole conversation yeah, 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 yeah. that's a whole conversation yeah, yeah. so the second relationship yeah. that you need to have is, a, is your relationship with god okay. that relationship is what feeds most of the relationships mm-hmm. yes there is the importance of now you having a relationship with yourself mm-hmm. which feeds most of the other relationships mm-hmm. but your relationship with god the same thing that jesus said that i don't do anything unless what i see my father do mm-hmm. because that relationship with god the father is what uh, paints a picture of what he expects from you mm-hmm. because now that is a relationship with your father a person, you see a father has two dimensions mm-hmm. there is abba and pata yes. then abba is where now he's relating with you as a provider mm-hmm. as as a loving daddy and all that and pata is where he comes in as a disciplinarian mm-hmm. so there is that those two aspects of god that you have to have a relationship with that there are times he will rebuke you and tell you this one apa umefanya ufala na hiyo ufala sitaki kuiona tena so at that particular time you are relating with pata and and every time that you relate with god there is there is that dimension of him that you relate with and scripture says that when he was talking to moses he told him go and tell pharaoh i am that i am has sent you because the i am is whatever you want me to become is what i will become whatever dimension of me that you want to interact with is what is you will interact with so that relationship with god is very very important and that is what brings us to church that is what brings us to the place of worship that is what brings us to the place of prayer the reason why people took 40 days of prayer is because we were building our relationship with god we were not building our relationship with the pastor I, I was not fasting because apostle said we fast no i was fasting because i have to build my relationship with god that will be able to help me to deal with other people then uh, when we get to know the relationship with god it is cultivated some people say bora nimeokoka bora naenda church 
Mm. Bora niko tu. Si niko, mm. si, si ni, niko church. There's nothing I do in church. The, when people are praying, I look at them in a manner likely to suggest you guys have very many problems. Utamaliza <laughs> sangapi. Umeopa one hour. <laughs> one hour mzima mbe kwa mkiomba kwa ni nini imu kona shimashida gani zi. But because I have not cultivated that relationship. People that are in in different kinds of relationships will tell you, and you will also tell us, that when it comes to relationship, you have to give in, you have to plant, you have to labor on it. Mm. And someone said friendship is work. Yes. You have to be very intentional mm. on making sure that that friendship works. Mm. So it, it is not just something that comes out of the blues. When it comes to re your relationship with God, he's looking, he's seeking for those that will worship him in spirit and in truth, mm. that the earth and everything that is in it is honestly waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God mm. because the sons of God have a dimension of God that needs to be shown out. Mm. So the, the sonship that you have with God is dependent on the relationship that you have with God. Mm. So that is very important. Mm. Relationship number three. Before you move to number three, uh, I'm imagining that that relationship with God is even more important at a foundational level. Very true. Because the pattern that is set, because Father is also pattern, I believe. The relationship that is set, or the example that is set between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in that it was a relationship that existed before the beginning. It is a relationship that continues, irrespective of all the dynamics yes. even in the Spirit. Very true. And is a relationship that will still remain intact after the Very end true. of time and so that must be that there must be a lot that we can learn from that dynamic even as pertains to our own relationships because if we must mirror god then it means even his relational attributes must also flow through us as well that is very important. Yeah, episode. Yeah, yeah, episode. Yeah, yeah, episode. It's very important. Because even scripture says in John 3 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So meaning that he was seeking relationship with human beings. Uh, Genesis says that he used to come in the cool of the day to have relationship was important mm. to him. Mm. So sometimes God shows up uh, to us and mm. many a times uh, I, I have felt that in my spirit that sometimes God shows up at the place of meeting and is asking Adam, Adam, where are you? Because we are not in our place. Yeah, the, that, are, that, that, that passage is so, it's, it's normally so touching mm. because a God that is so supreme was concerned that a man he used to commune with yes. is not in, not in the in normal place. place where he used yes. to show up. Yes. So he comes out to look for him and it's so important that you brought that out, Percy, because many young people wonder, I've messed up. Mm. I've done so much. Does he still really want anything that to do with me? with me? Does he still love my kind? Mm. And do I still have a chance? If there's anyone watching us right now that has maybe asked themselves that, what would be your message to them? If Adam had come out outright and said, God, I messed up, and I, I did what you said I don't do, please forgive me. Truth of the matter is, we will not be where we are. The problem is, Adam hid. And when he was caught, mm. he said, it is this one. Mm. And most of the young people are there, mm. that we lost our relationship with God. And when we lost our relationship with God, he called out to us and we hid. And we said, I don't think he will love me again. I don't think he cares for me again. I don't think he wants to be my father again. So we went deeper into sin. And the moment we went deeper into sin, uh, when he caught up with us and asked, so why did you do this? Mm. You, you start saying, you know, it was that person who did. It was that man who did. Mm. It was that man who did. And it was very simple. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn away from their evil ways, then I will hear from heaven. It's the same principle that it is his people called by his name. You are his person. You are created by him. You, you are a creation of God and he loves you so much that even when you are, a, you are wallowing in your sin, he still loves you. That is why he says that even though your sin be red as scarlet, 
I will make it as white as snow. Because that relationship is what is most important to him. That he sent his only begotten son to die for your sake. Not because he thought that you are out of bounds. He knew that if this person accepted Christ, if this person accepts my son, then my relationship with him has already been restored. So that is what he's seeking. He's looking even today. He's calling John, John, Mary, Mary. And he's out there just seeking for those that are lost. And he's looking for them earnestly. He's looking for them very earnestly. And he's saying, this blood that was shed on Calvary still has the power to save you. Irregardless of how red you think your, your, your sin is, he still is able to make it as white as snow. Irregardless of how uh, dark you are in a place, yeah. he's still willing to pick you from that place and place you somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So it is for you to make that decision mm -hmm. and come back to him. God will never come uh, very close to where you are. It is for you to know the father, the prodigal son and the father. That scripture is very powerful. Mm -hmm. The father used to go to the gates every day mm -hmm. to wait yeah. on the son. Yeah, yeah. And when he saw the son coming back home, he ran to him. Yeah. That is the same thing that is happening. Mm -hmm. God is somewhere waiting and saying, if only my son would know yes. how wonderful he is, mm -hmm. how loving I am towards him, and just turn and come back home, mm -hmm. then I have everything. I have the signet ring. I have the sandals that he will put on. I have the robe. Mm -hmm. I have the crown. I have everything that he will need for his sustenance. Mm -hmm. I, all I need for him to do is turn from his wicked ways and come back to me. You know, it's 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 so, as, as you were speaking, my mind was just taken to the story of the Samaritan woman in John chapter 4. And when the chapter starts, it says that, and Jesus had, had to, had to, something intentionally took him out of his course. Yes. And yet, based on the history of the Samaritans and the Jews, mm. they were yeah, not a people that used to interact. Even the lady asked him. Yeah, what business what? do you... Yes, what business is there? And yet... It's the Lord that had intentionally taken a yes. way out of his course to yes. go and meet her. But it's interesting, her, the, the answer to her cry, because mm. her desperation was for relationship. That's yes. what she really wanted. Yes. It showed up in a corrupted way in men, yes. but she really wanted God. A relationship, yes. The door was opened when she spoke the truth. True. And Jesus Naika said, you have spoken the truth. Naika 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 and she received what she needed. Yes. Wow. And she received water that she was never thirsty. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Apo ka, iyo niya. Tutendelea. <laughs> Alama za dukuduku. Dukuduku. Dukudu. 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 Uh -huh. Relationship so number three. Yeah. Relationship number three is family and loved ones. Mm -hmm. The relationship that you have with family is very important mm -hmm. and very key. Okay. Family is the bedrock of any society. It is a place from which, and that is why the devil fights a lot. Because the, in the family setup, that is where everything is. Today, there are blessings that I cannot attain. I cannot give to a person. As a pastor, there are blessings I cannot give because they are locked up in a parent. They are locked up in a father. They are locked up in a mother. They are locked up in someone that is in the family setup. So that is very important to understand, that family is very key. There are people who I have met and they say, you know what, me, I can survive without my father. Let me tell you the truth, you cannot. Because there is a blessing that your father has. And sometimes it requires for you to be the big man. I know Ali Kokosea. I know Ali Fanya Mavitu Zinyauko Nataka Fanya. I know it has been tough between you and your father. It has been tough between you and your mother. But the truth of the matter is there is a blessing that only that parent can give. So relationship with our parents is very important. Mm -hmm. Scripture says that they are our second God. Mm -hmm. That honor your father and mother. That is a principle. You cannot break a principle. The Bible says, honor your father and mother so that it may be well with you and so that you may live long in the land. So in the land that I will give you. So the same thing. When it comes to family, honor is very important. And that honor produces results. And those results are what now we see as people progressing in life and people now living a good life and living long on the earth. So family is a very important relationship that you cannot run away from. Relationship number four. Relationship number four is friends and colleagues. That is where now you get acquaintances. You get people that are close to you, 
you get best friends wana itakuwa bff sijaelewa but anyway you get bffs you get people that are in the in in the innermost circle in the outermost circle you see even jesus had that jesus had disciples that were afar off the 72 then he had 12 that were inside then he had three that were very close then he had john the beloved the man that would sleep on his chest The, so it, there is always that hierarchy where you have acquaintances people that are out there unawajua tu mkipatana mtasalimiana but you won't talk much then there are people that come closer and you can have a conversation with but not the deep conversations then there are people who will see you in your weakness and say by the way this man eh hey, hapana huyu jamaa analianga watu wanashindwa analianga aje na vile kwa sura ngumu akilia na kaanga aje because that person you have never had the, the opportunity to see that because that aspect of himself has never been projected mm-hmm. the last and most important now relationship that we talk about when we get now to transition from the youth ministry to the couples ministry is romantic relationships mm-hmm. the problem with most people is that they focus even the church when we talk about the youth when we think about the youth we think about romantic relationships we talk about romantic relationships and we forget that these four other relationships feed the romantic relationship that if i don't have a relationship with myself the romantic relationship will fail if i don't have a relationship with god the romantic relationship will fail if i don't have a relationship with my family then the romantic relationship will fail if i don't have friends and acquaintances and people and colleagues because that is where i will get a romantic relationship then i will not have a romantic relationship at the end of the day so we focus on the romantic but forget the four that feed the romantic so it is very important for us that as we are building on relationships even as you're thinking on that matter build on the four the fifth one will come automatically do, do do the relationships have relationships amongst themselves yes ah <laughs> kabisa you see this this is what i know yeah. truth is there yeah. there are people in your family yeah. that are part of family yeah. but they are your friends yeah. you see the, you see kuna wazazi wanasemanga huyo ni kijana yangu but ni rafiki yangu because you have had that relationship you are built on a friendship mm. that even as he is beating everyone else mm. or when he wants something done he knows i can call ian because when i tell ian something he will do so there is that place they are built the relationships are built among relationships so zinakwanga tu zime zime interconnected <laughs> interconnected time 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 uh because uh, in fact if we had another hour there's another there's somewhere else we would have opened which is the door of of need the fact that every every, every human being is a creature of need yes. and the fact that needs are met through relationships next time next time wow thank you so much for joining us i hope you've had a fantastic time even listening to what uh, we've had the privilege to discuss we started the show by saying that all things come from god to men through men I'm reminded in the book of John chapter 3 verse 27 where John the Baptist speaks and says that a man can receive nothing unless it is given to him from heaven. And so the fact that a human being is a creature of need, need at a spiritual level, need at a soulical level or even at the physical level means that relationships are critical to sustaining human life on the three dimensions of existence of man. Time unfortunately has brought us to a close. But I'd like to thank you once again for joining us for this inaugural episode of Fort on Air Katasi of the Fort Ministry Life Church International Limuru. I have been your host Ian Kagiri. Looking forward to having a uh, time like this once again soon and very soon. Check out or keep checking out local listings. That's what they say. But uh, we look forward to seeing you again. Baraka until we see you next time. Thank you.